Hi, this is Dr. Nikam. I'm one of the cardiologists. Welcome to 100 EKG interpretation rapid fire. We are going to cover a lot of EKGs uh, during this uh, session. Sit back, relax and uh, I would suggest you get a notepad and write down all the things I am going to be talking about because each one of them are going to teach you one or two points from every EKG we are going to read. Right now I am looking at one of the electrocardiograms and I am going to be going in a rapid pace. So if you like you can rewind this video and watch it at leisure time more than once so that you can begin to understand how we interpret electrocardiograms. Here is a patient with sinus rhythm, the heart rate is 59 per minute, this is a 54 year old patient and we have some non-specific STT changes and also some T wave inversion. Reduce R wave progression across the anterior leads but uh, it is not bad but overall it is uh, it's a fairly benign electrocardiogram with uh, sinus rhythm and non-specific STT changes. So let's Okay, here's the next electrocardiogram. This is a sinus rhythm, a rate of 92 per minute and the only abnormality I see is an RSR prime which is a sort of an incomplete right bundle branch block. It does not meet all the criteria for complete right bundle branch block uh, and the T waves are upright, the QRS complexes are good, there is good R wave progression across the anterior leads. Uh, so this is basically a normal electrocardiogram except for an RSR prime in V1. Let us go with the next electrocardiogram. This is an electrocardiogram. Obviously, you can see the rate is faster. The rate is about 110 per minute. So, this is sinus tachycardia. Number two, you see some flat T waves all across the leads. So, there is evidence of T wave changes. So number three, you can look at the left atrial enlargement here as evidenced by a negative deflection which is involving more than one block uh, in the, the smallest block in the electrocardiogram which is equal to point <coughs> uh, point 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds and for the left atrium to be enlarged it has to cover the entire one block which is uh, 1 millimeter in height and 40 milliseconds in width. So we have a left atrial enlargement and also if you look at the voltage here and the negative voltage here there is evidence for a left ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, but the SCT changes are not suggestive of uh, hypertrophy with strain. So basically we have a patient with uh, sinus tachycardia with non-specific STT changes, left atrial enlargement and left ventricular hypertrophy. Cardiogram, this is a sinus uh, uh, what looks like atrial fibrillation because uh, you can see this nice uh, fibrillatory waves here. The RR intervals are varying but the RR intervals are less than 100 per minute. Again when you see ST atrial fibrillation the SCT changes are very hard to interpret but nonetheless the STT changes are uh, basically abnormal and uh, let us see what else we see. There is good R wave progression in the inferior leads, there is good R wave progression in the anterior leads, no evidence of any previous myocardial infarctions. Uh, when the left atrial atrial, when you see atrial fibrillation, there is possibly evidence of left atrial enlargement, uh, but we do not see much evidence for left ventricular hypertrophy. So, this is an electrocardiogram with atrial fibrillation with the non specific STT changes. Okay, this is an electrocardiogram, and we look at here and we can see nice P waves here. So, this is a sign sinus rhythm with an occasional uh, premature ventricular complex and here we see something very interesting. There are QS complexes in 2, 3 and AVF. That means it suggests a possible old inferior myocardial infarction. This may also represent the presence of a left anterior hemiblock and left axis deviation. And in the chest leads, there is also a Q wave in lead 2, suggestive of a possible anterior infarct. And if you look at it, the ST segments are little bit elevated. It is hard to say how old the infarct is, but it could be recent uh, uh, anterior infarction. So, there are some abnormal findings in this electrocardiogram. One is possible old inferior myocardial infarction. I call this old because the T waves are upright uh, with the deep Q waves in leads 2, 3 and ABF. Whereas anteriorly there are Q waves with the mild ST elevation and T wave inversion. So, this patient could have a recent anterior myocardial infarction on top of an old inferior myocardial infarction. The rhythm is sinus and uh, those are some of the findings in this electrocardiogram. All right. 
Okay, this is a nice looking electrocardiogram. The rate is 94 per minute, the sinus rhythm, the T waves are nice and upright, the QRS complexes look okay, the anterior leads also look all right. So, this is basically a sinus rhythm with maybe minor T wave changes which I probably would not really count, but otherwise this is electrocardiogram looks okay. Okay, here is an electrocardiogram which is again sinus rhythm because you have nice P followed by QRS complexes. This rate is a little bit fast about 100 so it becomes a, not sinus rhythm but a sinus tachycardia. At the same time we have some T wave inversion in the inferior leads especially lead 3 and ABF and we also have a left atrial enlargement here, incomplete right bundle branch block and maybe some voltage criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy but, uh, but there is evidence of uh, even some peaked T waves in the inferior leads. So, this may suggest by atrial enlargement with SGT changes to suggest here of ischemia along with uh, an incomplete right bundle branch block. So, that is uh, the interpretation for this electrocardiogram. Well, oh, this is an interesting electrocardiogram. Here we have a sinus uh, rhythm of bradycardia. The rate is much slower. We know it is sinus because there is a P wave uh, followed by QRS uh, very nicely. But the most obvious finding in this electrocardiogram is low voltage. Look at this, they are less than 5 millimeters uh, uh, in height. So, uh, low voltage could be found in a number of cases, the most common cause of which is uh, lead position, uh, especially if it is in the chest leads or it could be related to hypothyroidism or very commonly we see this in postoperative cardiac patients where there is uh, evidence of fluid around the heart that can cause uh, low QRS voltage. So, whenever you see a patient with a low QRS voltage, you always worry about hypothyroidism. And also look at the T waves of flat uh, all throughout the electrocardiogram and also there is some evidence of ST elevation in the lead V6. Uh, but other than that, uh, it is not seen in multiple leads. So, it is hard to say what to make out of that. Nonetheless, the T waves of flat and uh, the R wave progression is not all that great in the end to V1 to V4. So, th this is obviously a patient with coronary artery disease and low voltage with uh, non specific T wave changes. Now, here we have a regular sinus rhythm, a rate of uh, 66 per minute, uh, some flat T waves, uh, but other than that. Uh, nothing really spectacular uh, in this electrocardiogram that we can really speak of. The R wave progression seems to be okay. Other than that, the inferior leads are all right. No evidence of previous infarctions and that is the sinus. All right, let us look at this. Now, obviously, this is a sinus tachycardia because you have a P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS, but the rate is close to about 100. So, this is sinus tachycardia. But if you look at the QRS deflection in lead 2, the deflections are almost uh, equal height in both directions. When the downward deflection is more than the upward deflection, then we have what is known as uh, uh, left axis deviation. But uh, this, this does not quite meet the criteria for left axis deviation and uh, this is uh, not a representative of Q waves in the inferior leads because we have an initial R wave here. So, that is not the case and here obviously we have an incomplete right bundle branch block because of the R S R prime uh, uh, we see here along with flat T waves uh, in the lateral chest lid. So, this is a more or less a sinus tachycardia with uh, flat T wave changes, non-specific T wave changes and also incomplete right bundle branch block. Okay, we got a nice sinus rhythm here and uh, everything seems to be in order except for some flat T wave changes, but other than that uh, nothing really strict. Okay, this is a sinus tachycardia uh, because we have a PQRS, PQRS combination and some non-specific T wave changes, but other than that nothing really impressive, no evidence of previous infox. Okay, we got a sinus rhythm here and uh, this does not quite meet the criteria for left axis deviation. And on the chest leads, we have everything okay, some non specific T wave changes. And the computer also reads this as prolonged QT interval of uh, 469 milliseconds. QT interval is measured from the beginning of uh, the QRS uh, complex uh, to the end of uh, T wave, and this is corrected to the halt rate. 
and patients who are on antiarrhythmic drugs and some antipsychotic drugs can be having a prolonged QT interval. Prolonged QT interval could be a precursor for ventricular arrhythmia and ventricular tachycardia. That's why it's very important to pay attention to the presence of a prolonged QT interval. Okay, obviously the rate is pretty fast here, looks to be pretty regular, it is sinus rhythm, I would say sinus tachycardia, it is at a rate of 125, but other than that, I do not see anything significant, this is in a 26 year old patient, so I would say, you know, this is just pretty benign supraventricular tachycardia or sinus tachycardia. This is another patient with, uh, I guess, a sinus tachycardia with no significant changes in the electrocardiogram to speak of except for maybe perhaps some minor T wave changes. Okay, here's a sinus rhythm with uh, uh, nothing really spectacular, but there is left axis deviation because I told you the ne negative deflection is greater than the positive deflection in lead two. So that leads to the left axis deviation and also left anterior hemi block, which is a conduction problem. But other than that, we don't see anything significant in terms of ischemia or cardiogram here. Now again, we see a sinus rhythm with uh, some T wave changes in the inferior leads. Anteriorly, we have loss of orbits anteriorly in V1 and V2. This may suggest uh, a possible old inferior uh, anterior infarction uh, along with the uh, <coughs> some T wave changes in the lateral leads. So this looks like an abnormal electrocardiogram with possible uh, diffuse T wave changes and possible anterior infarction which may be perhaps old. Okay, this is a sinus rhythm with the T wave inversions in the inferior leads. Anterior leads look pretty good. The, this good R wave progression, the QRS complex and the T waves are normal in configuration. Uh, there is no evidence of any, any infarction, arrhythmias or heart blocks and uh, uh, I, except for the, I would say there is some evidence of inferior wall ischemia <coughs> because of T wave inversion in lead 3 and AVF. Okay, now we got another sinus rhythm with uh, incomplete right bundle branch block, uh, some T wave changes and in the anterior leads and the lateral leads, uh, nothing really spectacular. Uh, here's another important point I want to bring to your attention. When you read electrocardiogram, you just don't look at, okay, lead 1, lead 2, lead 3 like that. No, you look at in the regions, okay, 1 and ABL is high anterior, 2, 3, AVF is inferior. V1 to V4 anteroseptal, V5 to V6 lateral. So whenever there is a problem, it occurs in a given region of the heart which is supplied by a particular artery. <coughs> so if you group your thoughts uh, in terms of looking at the inferior wall, the anterior wall, the lateral wall, the high anterior, then you are just looking at like three or four areas of the heart at, at the most to begin with. <coughs> at the most to begin with. So here we can say the inferior wall looks okay, the anterior wall looks okay, the lateral wall looks okay, there is an incomplete right bundle branch block which we can mention that extra electrocardiogram here, we got a sinus rhythm, anti inferior wall, T wave changes, anterior wall looks okay, lateral wall, T wave changes. So basically we have a sinus rhythm with some non-specific STT changes. Look at the next electrocardiogram, sinus rhythm and inferior wall except for lead 3, the T wave can be upright, flat or negative and it has no significance. But other than that, this mild ST elevation, but uh, this is a 25 year old patient, so I would say this may be just early repolarization. But other than that, I am not really impressed with anything that is significant. Because there is diffuse ST elevation, we have to mention that it could be early repolarization or even possibly early pericarditis. Okay, here the rhythm is abnormal. This looks like a flutter here because look at this, this rate. The rate is about 220 to 240. So this is a atrial flutter with variable conduction, ventricular rate around 90 or so. And again, we see some non-specific STT changes. There is left axis deviation and non-specific STT changes. So I would su suggest this as uh, atrial tachycardia. It says I would say more like uh, atrial flutter. The computer reads it as uh, atrial flutter. Left axis deviation, non-specific STT changes. So those are the things that we see here. Again, we have something looks like a sinus rhythm here, right bundle branch block. When you see a wide QRS, like a rabbit here, 
in the anterior in the anterior leaves v1 v2 v3 then you see a slurred s wave like this is like a nice slurred s wave in the lateral leaves then this is diagnostic of right bundle branch block so we have a sinus rhythm with a right bundle branch block and also look at the negative deflection in lead 2 is more than the positive so we have a left anterior hemi block left axis deviation and there are non specific stt changes so this is definitely an abnormal electrocardiogram with uh, right bundle branch block left anterior hemi block that means it is bifascicular block if the PR interval is prolonged, then it becomes a trifascicular block. But here the PR is normal, so we are dealing with a, a bifascicular block. And uh, okay, we got a sinus rhythm here and uh, inferior wall. There are some STT changes, lateral wall, some T wave, non specific T wave changes. So I would just say non specific uh, STT changes. But other than that, no evidence of old infarctions or arrhythmias of any kind. That's next one and this is the sinus rhythm, the inferior region looks okay, now the anterior region also looks okay because except for RSR prime, you wouldn't even call this incomplete right bundle branch block because you just have a little terminal R wave which depending on the age if it's a young person but this patient is 45, so th this is just a normal variation I would say for a younger person uh, but other than that we don't see anything spectacular. So here we have a sinus rhythm inferior wall the T waves are flat and on in the anterior leads we have loss of R waves but it may be related to lead positioning and also again we have STT changes. But uh, the important thing to remember is the voltage here, the negative and the positive volt, if they are put together to be 33, 35 millimeter high, then you worry about uh, possible left ventricular hypertrophy. And along with that, we also have some STT changes, which also adds to uh, the left ventricular hypertrophy. So this is uh, a sinus rhythm with non-specific STT changes and possible left ventricular hypertrophy. All right. Okay, here we have a sinus rhythm. Nice. Uh, this is how we want to see the T waves. Anything other than this quality of T waves has to be read as non-specific T wave changes. If the T wave is inverted, then you read it as uh, T wave inversion, which is representative of ischemia. If the ST segments are not on the baseline, uh, that is the, uh, in line with the PR interval, then the ST segments are also involved in the ischemia. Again, we have a, a an RSR prime style changes, but that is really not significant, I would say, because we have a young 38 year old patient. So this is normal sinus rhythm and nice T waves here. So this is a, basically a normal electrocardiogram. Okay, here we have a nice atrial waves. And in fact, these atrial waves are more than one box or 40 milliseconds and one millimeter in height. So we have a left atrial enlargement inferior lead there are some T wave changes but laterally we got increased voltage. So we have left ventricular hypertrophy and we also may the ST segments are abnormal. So we have a left ventricular hypertrophy with uh, left atrial enlargement and non-specific STT changes uh, all across the board. So those are the findings in this electrocardiogram. Let's look at this one. We see baseline artifact this is called the 60 cycles. And if you look at it, the negative deflection is more than the positive, so we have a left axis deviation. The T waves are upright all right, but the baseline artifact is sort of confusing us with uh, some of the findings. But look at here, we have loss of R waves anteriorly. And laterally, they seem to be okay, but still we have STT changes, maybe even inverted T wave changes. Uh, so this is obviously an abnormal electrocardiogram with the normal sinus rhythm with the anterior infarction which is most likely old along with left axis deviation and non-specific STT changes. Okay, this is a sinus rhythm, nice inferior wall uh, leads, the anterior wall we have a nice uh, deflection of a QRS complexes but I would have seen but it may be related to the position, the lack of progression of R wave the way we would like to see it but nonetheless the T waves are upright, there is nothing to suggest ischemia or infarction. So this is uh, a, basically a normal electrocardiogram. 
Again, we have a normal sinus rhythm and we have an incomplete right bundle branch block here. The T waves are upright, the T waves are upright, the T waves and the QRS complexes all look pretty benign. So I would say this is a normal sinus rhythm with the incomplete right bundle branch block. Even though the computer does not read this as incomplete right bundle branch block one here. Now we have a sinus rhythm. T waves are flat inferiorly. T waves are okay anteriorly. T waves are flat laterally. So we have an infro lateral T wave changes and these are abnormal findings. So this is an abnormal electrocardiogram with a normal sinus rhythm and non specific STT changes. Let us move to the next one here. All right. Okay, again we have a sinus rhythm with the non-specific STT changes in the inferior leads, anterior leads we have T wave changes laterally, the ST segments are a little bit elevated with the flat to negative T waves. So this is an abnormal electrocardiogram with uh, non-specific STT changes uh, and uh, here. All right, we got a sinus rhythm here. You see, you look for the rhythm not only in the anterior, in the leads, you look at all the electric leads because there may be one strip which may clearly show you the presence of uh, a sinus rhythm like here we have a PQRS, PQRS, PQRS again here you see this here it is kind of confusing in lead 1. So you look at various leads to quickly come to the diagnosis as to what the underlying uh, rhythm is. Now look at the inferior region looks okay, anterior region looks okay, the lateral region looks okay. So I think basically this is uh, this is a fairly acceptable normal alert. We got a sinus rhythm here because you can see P waves very nicely. The T waves are upright and here we have the anterior leads which are a little flat T waves and it says left atrial enlargement. Uh, I guess you can say because th th these things are real small but nonetheless you can see it covers one small block that is uh, 40 milliseconds and 1 millimeter in height. So we have left atrial enlargement, we have non-specific T wave changes. Uh, it does not say the non specific T wave changes, but we will <coughs> give that one and call it a day. Let us go to the next electrocardiogram here. <laughs> well, we have a baseline artifact here, we got a sinus rhythm, we got an incomplete right bundle branch block. The T waves are upright. There is a tiny Q wave in the inferior leads, but those Q waves are not diagnostic. The inferior Q waves to be diagnostic, they have to be more than 25 percent of the R waves. Number two, the QRS complex, the Q duration has to be more than 30 milliseconds or just a little below one box or I would say 40 milliseconds. So you do not have all these criteria. So these are non-diagnostic Q waves. And again, we have a right bundle branch block and the lateral leads look okay. There may be some increased voltage uh, in the limb leads uh, suggestive of a possible left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, we got a baseline artifact here and uh, the rhythm is, uh, I see a nice P wave here. I am trying to see if any other leads, here is another nice P wave. So I would say here is another nice P wave. P wave. QRS complex. So this is a sinus rhythm with baseline artifacts. Again, the T waves are all just flat, non-specific STT changes and this is okay for a 98-year-old patient. Okay, we have a sinus tachycardia but right here in the first lead we see T wave inversion. T wave inversion in lead 1 and AVL is not normal. So that is abnormal to begin with. We have left atrial enlargement. In the inferior leads we have got STT changes and in the lateral leads we have STT changes. We got increased voltage, we got left atrial enlargement. So there are multiple criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. This is a very important term I want you to keep in mind. There is left ventricular hypertrophy and then there is left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. That is when you see symmetrical T wave inversion in the lateral chest leads and also lead 1 and AVL along with increased voltage and perhaps left atrial enlargement. If a patient has atrial fibrillation, it may be equal to the presence of uh, atrial uh, enlargement. So these are some of the findings in this particular EKG. All right, let's uh, move on. Okay, this is sinus rhythm. The T waves are okay, negative and the T waves are flat here. And also there's loss of R waves in the anterior leads. Lead one and uh, sometimes this may be related to position and uh, if it's a young person and uh, if they have a large breast and if the leads are put way below then you can get QS complexes if all the other leads are normal but since this patient has some flat T wave changes 
I would be concerned to the presence as to the presence of Q S complex in 1 and uh, B 1 and B 2. So, <coughs> this can be further confirmed with a echocardiogram or something that will look at the wall motions to see if this patient did have a previous myocardial infarction. Uh, these ST, ST segments are a little bit abnormal. Okay, we got a sinus rhythm here, the inferior leads will look all right, the anterior leads, this loss of orbits anteriorly, this presence of a old enteroseptal myocardial infarction and the lateral leads look okay. So, this is a patient with most likely a septal infarct with uh, non-specific uh, T wave changes. Now, here we got another sinus rhythm here, the inferior leads look all right, the anterior leads look okay, the lateral leads there is some non-specific T wave changes. So, even in the high anterior leads, we have some T wave inversion actually. So, this is a patient with the sinus rhythm and non-specific T wave changes. Okay, this is a patient with atrial fibrillation. Why do I say atrial fibrillation? But look at the RR interval. The RR intervals are varying. We do not see any discernible P waves on any one of these leads. So, we have irregular RR interval, absence of P waves that is almost diagnostic of atrial fibrillation and also we seem to have some degree of low voltage though not very significant. So, we have atrial fibrillation and the axis could also be towards the left axis deviation. So, there may be atrial fibrillation, left axis deviation and some non-specific STT changes. Anteriorly also we do not see a good or wave progression, this patient could have an anterior infarction to begin with or this patient may also have COPD or chronic lung disease which can make the anterior leads uh, less uh, visible. Uh, so, this could be something that we need to be looked into with further clarification in terms of x-rays and echocardiograms to further pinpoint as to the findings that we see in this electrocardiogram. So, I said we have atrial fibrillation, left axis deviation, possible old inferior anterior infarction with non-specific STT changes. <coughs> All right, so we got another patient with sinus rhythm, non-specific STT changes in the inferior leads, in the anterior leads and in the lateral leads. So, this is a clear cut abnormal electrocardiogram and also there is slightly decreased voltage in the <coughs> chest leads. This could be related to patient's size or it could be related to one of the other conditions which I mentioned earlier and that is uh, hypothyroidism. Non-specific STT changes are also abnormal. All right, let us look at here. Okay, we had not seen one for a long time and here we have a wide QRS complex. We have a sinus rhythm which is basically sinus bradycardia because of the slow rate. We have a wide QRS complex in lead 1 and AVL. We had seen wide QRS complex in V1 and V2 that represented right bundle branch block. But when you see wide QRS complex in lead 1, AVL, V5 to V6 that is suggestive of left bundle branch blocks. So, we have a very good case of a left bundle branch block and also look at the wide negative S waves in the anterior leads and all of these fit with left bundle branch block and along with the left bundle branch block we also have this typical downward sloping ST segment with a, an upright T wave or maybe inverted T wave and so there are multiple things to suggest you of left bundle branch block. When the left bundle branch block occurs we always look for other blocks sometimes we can have a left anterior hemi block but here we do not have a left anterior hemi block or left axis deviation. Basically, we are seeing a, an isolated left bundle branch block and even the PR interval seems to be within reasonable limit along with some STT changes. Immediately, we see the contrast from the previous EKG. Previous, we had a wide QRS complex in 1 and AVL. Now, we have a narrow QRS complex in, in 1 and AVL, but we have a wide slurred S wave in 1 and AVL. To me, that itself is diagnostic of right bundle branch block. I do not need to look at the lateral chest leads. I do not need to even look at these chest leads to say this patient has right bundle branch block. So, if you see this slurred S waves in the anterior leads, I mean lead 1, lead all these leads, lead 2, AVR or ABL, then it is almost certain that this patient has right bundle branch blocks. 
So we have a sinus rhythm with the right bundle branch block and again you know the T waves are flat to inverted so we have a patient with sinus rhythm, right bundle branch block. This is complete right bundle branch block, non-specific STT changes. Sinus rhythm, nice QRS progression here. Uh, this little low voltage in the anterior leads, uh, this 67 year old patient. Again, the lead progression in the lateral leads are also not up to par. So, I would be concerned about a patient with a sinus rhythm with possible old anteroseptal infarction and non specific STT changes. Next patient, sinus rhythm, the inferior leads look pretty benign. There's a good R wave progression. Usually, you don't see a big R wave in the anterior leads. Uh, but this is 77 years old patient. So, you sometimes wonder about chronic lung disease that is causing right ventricular hypertrophy, pulmonary hypertension and elevated right heart pressure. So, that can produce right ventricular increased voltage. And this increased voltage is an important point in this particular patient, especially if he is 77, you wonder about chronic lung disease. If a patient has chronic lung disease, you also look for big right atrial enlargement which we do not see in this particular EKG. The other conditions that can cause tall R waves in the anterior leads could be posterior infarction or left to posterior hemiblock and right bundle branch block along with right ventricular hypertrophy. So, these are some of the things that cause tall R waves and with some degree of uh, further evaluation we should be able to pinpoint the diagnosis or even pulmonary embolus, acute pulmonary embolus can give you a similar picture. Okay, sinus rhythm, inferior leads, little STT abnormality, anterior leads, the RV progression is okay. <coughs> Actually, this is a sinus bradycardia, the rate is only 52 and the T waves. So, this is sinus bradycardia with some non-specific T wave changes, but nothing really significant. No evidence of old infarctions or any heart blocks. <coughs> the lateral leads look okay. Here is a sinus rhythm. This is a young lady, 35 years old uh, and uh, sinus rhythm. This little T wave induction can be normal in young female patient. The T waves are upright in the lateral chest lead. So, this is basically a, a normal electrocardiogram. And this is left atrial enlargement here which appears to be significant. And here we have a sinus rhythm, again T wave changes, anteriorly we have loss of R waves, this patient could have had a old anteroseptal myocardial infarction, again we have this diffuse, <coughs> this diffuse uh, T wave changes uh, with uh, possible loss of R waves anteriorly. Okay, we have a sinus rhythm. First of all, you can see this low voltage in the limb leads, this flat T waves laterally. In the anteriorly, we have QS complexes in lead V1 and V2, T wave inversion, and in the lateral leads, we have T wave inversion with ST depression. So, this is an abnormal electrocardiogram with a normal sinus rhythm, low voltage in the limb bleed, so possible old anteroseptal myocardial infarction with STT changes is suggestive of ischemia. So, this is an abnormal electrocardiogram. But other than that, we do not see anything really significant. Sinus rhythm, left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block, incomplete right bundle branch block, possible old anteroseptal myocardial infarction. So, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, Okay, here is the next electrocardiogram. Obviously, the rate is pretty fast, it is about 114. Sometimes we see SCT changes related to the rate, and, and when the rate slows down, it may go back to normal. But nonetheless, this is a sinus tachycardia with non specific STT changes. So, this is a case of an atrial fibrillation. The RR intervals are varying, and there are fibrillatory waves in lead V1 along with the low voltage we see in this patient. So, there is also loss of R wave progression in the anterior leads. So, this may suggest some underlying conditions such as coronary artery disease uh, because of loss of R wave progression and all this. It could also be a patient with chronic lung disease where we can see low voltage, loss of R waves and non-specific STT changes. So, that is how you try to detect a patient's uh, overall medical condition by just looking at the electrocardiogram. 
Oh, look at this. This is another case of uh, a tachycardia, a rate of uh, almost uh, 140. And uh, if you look at, there are some clear cut P waves. If you got a P wave, P wave, P wave, there's no P wave. <laughs> There are some P waves and there are some ectopic beats, but the rates are variable. And uh, this may be a case of a like a sinus tachycardia with multiple PACs. And the question is why does this patient have sinus tachycardia with PVCs and PACs? And there are also a few other findings left axis deviation, non specific SCT changes, loss of orbits anteriorly all across the chest leads, and all of these put together, you begin to wonder does this patient have lead, lead misplacement because of loss of orbits anteriorly? Does this patient have a large pericardial or pleural effusion that is blocking these electrodes uh, leads from coming to the chest wall? Does this uh, patient uh, have coronary artery disease? Does this patient have chronic lung disease? Any number of things are possible given the age of 74 years, you begin to wonder about all these conditions that may be accounting for these uh, grossly abnormal findings. Left axis deviation, loss of anterior waves which may suggest uh, uh, anteroseptal or anterolateral myocardial infarction along with the PACs which may also suggest left atrial enlargement. So there are a whole bunch of findings in this one electrocardiogram. Okay, we got a sinus rhythm here. Uh, basically the T waves are okay except for this loss of R waves anteriorly. Again, this may be related to lead position since this is a 35 year old patient, I wouldn't be concerned. And a female, it's not uncommon to see T wave inversion in V1 and V2 in a female patient uh, if it's misplaced because of the breast, then I would repeat the electrocardiogram to confirm some of the findings. But we have a what looks like a atrial fibrillation here. But again, look at this slurred terminal S wave, that is right bundle branch block. Atrial fibrillation, right bundle branch block, inferior wall, STT changes, anterior wall, right bundle branch block, non-specific STT changes lateral wall non-specific STT changes, no evidence of real big Q waves anywhere. So this is a patient with atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response over 100 with the right bundle branch block and non-specific STT changes. All right, we got another sinus rhythm with baseline artifacts, loss of R waves anteriorly and loss of R waves laterally left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block with non-specific STT changes. Sinus rhythm, uh, inferior leads look okay, anterior leads little flat T wave changes. So we have non-specific T wave changes, nothing really spectacular. Baseline artifacts, sinus rhythm, no significant changes. Again, we got a sinus rhythm, nice T waves and QRS complexes anteriorly. Also, we got good R wave progression. This is a normal electrocardiogram. Sinus rhythm, T wave flattening here in the inferior leads, anterior leads. We also have T wave changes, so flat, sometimes inverted, lateral walls. So, this is diffuse, non specific STT changes with sinus rhythm. All right, sinus rhythm here, little wide QRS complex. Now we got left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block, left atrial enlargement, first degree AB block. So we got bifascicular block along with deep QRS complexes in the anterior leads with some uh, R wave changes here. It's like an intraventricular conduction delay, left atrial enlargement, left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block and possibly left ventricular hypertrophy to a certain degree. So these are all some of the findings in this electrocardiogram. Move on to the next one. Okay, this is pretty rapid rate here, 120 per minute. Again, we see, uh, looks like a sinus rhythm, but it's very hard to say. Uh, I would say the RR intervals look fairly constant. And uh, the question is, is this sinus tachycardia? Sometimes when the rates are in the range of uh, 120 to 130, you always wonder whether it's a flutter with 2 to 1 conduction. And that's why you look for any sawtooth appearance in any one of these leads. So I wouldn't be surprised if this patient has sinus tachycardia or, per or perhaps atrial flutter with 2 to 1 conduction with non-specific STT changes. 
uh, the best way to find out is to do a little carotid pressure and if you can slow down the rate and if the QRS complex is March, then you know you have a sinus uh, tachycardia and if you see there is dropping of uh, QRS complexes with the flutter waves, then you are dealing with an atrial flutter. Okay, we got a sinus rhythm, real nice, 68 per minute and in anteriorly we got, uh, this is a 35 year old uh, female patient. So, this T wave inversion V1, V2 which is normal finding and otherwise nothing really spectacular, this it looks okay. Let's look at this electrocardiogram here, QRS complex, low voltage, RR intervals varying. So, we have atrial fibrillation with low QRS complex voltage, premature ventricular complex, loss of anterior uh, uh, chest, uh, loss of uh, R waves in the anterior leads, non-specific STT changes. So, we are dealing with a patient with atrial fibrillation, possible old anterior infarction along with non-specific STT changes. So, this is an abnormal electrocardiogram. Okay, we got a sinus rhythm with uh, perhaps left axis deviation and uh, first degree AV block because of prolonged PR interval, loss of R waves anteriorly which may represent old anteroceptal myocardial infarction, but nothing really acute. So, we have sinus rhythm left anterior hemi block, left atrial, I mean first degree AV block and uh, loss of anterior waves suggesting possible. Okay, here we something new we have not seen so far and some spikes. So, this is a pacemaker rhythm. So, this uh, spike is before the QRS complex. So, this is an atrial pacing with ventricular sensing. So, we have a atrial sensing, atrial pacing with ventricular sensing. So, the QRS complexes remain narrow, but occasionally when the ventricles do not kick in, then you can have a paced ventricular beat and that is what we are seeing in this side of the electrocardiogram. Similarly, here also we see a, a atrium paced I and mean the ventricle paced. Okay, it is not clear as to why we have this uh, electrodes, but this change of leads here, so you cannot really say. <coughs> So, this is an electronic pacemaker with the atrial pace, pacing, ventricular capture along with some occasional ventricular uh, paced beats. Okay, we got a sinus rhythm with the left axis deviation, non-specific STT changes in the inferior leads. Uh, this could be an incomplete right bundle branch block, STT changes again throughout the electrocardiogram. So, this is again a, a sort of an abnormal electrocardiogram. Sinus rhythm, T wave changes in the inferior leads, uh, there is not enough criteria for left atrial enlargement here. Sinus rhythm, incomplete uh, right bundle branch block or complete right bundle branch block. So, this is sinus rhythm with the complete right bundle branch block with uh, no other findings that are of great significance. Sinus rhythm. Inferior wall looks okay, anterior wall looks okay, lateral wall looks okay, minor T wave changes, but nothing really it says anterior wall because of the loss of poor R wave progression. Uh, it could be, but it is hard to say. Sinus rhythm, the inferior region looks okay. Here we have loss of R waves V1, V2, and perhaps V3. So, this possible anteroceptal myocardial infarction, old one with uh, sinus rhythm. Here we got a right axis deviation because your lead 1 is negative unless the leads were misplaced between the right and the left arm. The inferior lead has uh, STT changes, anterior lead is loss of R waves it suggests you have possible anteroceptal myocardial infarction and laterally we have STT changes. So, this is an abnormal electrocardiogram. Okay, we have sinus rhythm here as we can see uh, there is uh, loss of R waves again V1 and V2 with non-specific STT changes. So, you consider possibly uh, possible uh, anteroceptal myocardial infarction. Sinus rhythm, baseline artifacts, the 60 cycle artifacts, non-specific STT changes and that is about it. Again, we have sinus rhythm with the T wave inversions in the anterior leads, but since this is a 34 34 year old female, this may be normal findings and there is nothing really significant to suggest anything. Sinus rhythm, we have a left axis deviation, the QRS complex is more negative than positive 
and then the other ones are both negative. So, left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block, right one the branch block, non specific STT changes. So, we are talking about bifascicular block with the non specific STT changes. So, that so those are some of the findings in this electrocardiogram. Oh, it is very hard to say what the rhythm is and we may have to sit here for a while to figure out what the rhythm is because we have too much uh, 60 cycle interference. But uh, when something like this happens, you always look at the RR intervals. So they, they look fairly regular here and they are comparable to these QRS complexes. So I would have to assume this is atrial, uh, I am sorry, sinus rhythm and obviously SGT changes are also there. Let us look at the next electrocardiogram, normal sinus rhythm with uh, incomplete uh, right bundle branch block and no significant STT changes. Sinus rhythm, loss of always anteriorly, the lateral leads look ok, possible old anterior infarction or it could be lead misplacement. Sinus rhythm, the inferior region shows some non-specific T wave changes, we have a right bundle branch block which is incomplete and nothing really significant here. Okay, we have a sinus rhythm and these T waves are upright, the uh, QRS complexes are upright, uh, good volume, that is a normal, uh, that is a, okay, we have sinus rhythm and immediately you can see this right bundle branch block, this left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block and low voltage. So, we have bifascicular block with low voltage and non-specific STT changes. So, there are a lot of findings in this electrocardiogram. Okay, again we have a sinus rhythm with uh, <coughs> nothing really significant uh, except for a little mild ST elevation which could be early reporization porosization, uh, and it is anterior infarct which I do not agree with but otherwise it is ok. Here we have a sinus rhythm with uh, increased voltage in the inferior leads, left atrial enlargement. And, and possibly left ventricular hypertrophy, I should say. Okay, we have sinus rhythm here, non specific T wave changes in the inferior leads, uh, loss of R waves anteriorly, left atrial enlargement here, non specific STT changes in the lateral leads. So, this is probably a coronary artery disease patient with uh, old anteroseptal myocardial infarction, left atrial enlargement, and non specific STT changes. So, this is, a, this is a severe bradycardia with a rate of 50 per minute and there is a RSR prime in lead 1, but other than that there is nothing really significant except for slow rate. Is sinus rhythm, inferior wall T wave changes, lateral wall T wave changes. So, this is normal sinus rhythm, but it is not saying, let us go to the next one, sinus rhythm with the non-specific STT changes uh, throughout, but nothing really significant. And this one is a sinus rhythm with the non-specific uh, T wave changes, but nothing really. And where is uh, a slurred S wave? That is again suggests you have right bundle branch block. And so, yes, right bundle branch block here, V1, V2 and AVL. So, those are all buddies looking at the, the back side or the right side of the heart left anterior hemi block, left anterior fascicular block, right bundle branch block and uh, sinus uh, bradycardia. Okay, we have sinus rhythm here with non-specific T wave changes. Sinus rhythm, non-specific T wave changes inferiorly, anteriorly we have non-specific STT changes. So, there is diffuse non-specific STT change. Here we see diffuse non-specific STT changes. Sinus rhythm, T waves are ok, the QRS are ok in the inferior leads, anteriorly they look alright. Again, sinus rhythm, the inferior leads show loss of, uh, I am sorry, loss of R waves uh, in the inferior leads, that is something we need to look into. Uh, anteriorly, they got some non specific T wave changes, nothing spectacular. I would get an electrocardiogram to make sure that the right side of the heart or the inferior wall is doing ok. Uh, so that <coughs> no significant pathology exists. Okay, here we have a case of a sinus bradycardia. The T waves are okay. Anterior leads look okay. The lateral leads okay. Except for bradycardia, I don't see anything really significant. Sinus rhythm, nothing really significant. 
This is again a sinus rhythm with uh, non-specific uh, T wave changes, nothing really of significance. Okay, severe sinus bradycardia, non-specific T wave changes and loss of orbis and T release. So, this may be a patient with uh, severe bradycardia and uh, possible old anteroseptal myocardial infarction. Again, we have sinus rhythm with non-specific T wave changes, sinus tachycardia with uh, non-specific SCT changes. Okay, we got sinus rhythm, left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block, right bundle branch block, non specific STT changes. So, these are some of the findings in this electrocardiogram. Here we have again sinus rhythm with non specific STT changes, a left axis deviation, left anterior hemi block, old anteroseptal myocardial infarction, left atrial enlargement, and non specific STT changes in the lateral chest leads. So, these are some of the findings. So, what do they say here? Okay, sinus rhythm, uh, inferior leads look okay, anterior leads, some T wave changes, non specific STT changes, nothing really acute. Sinus rhythm, the inferior wall looks okay, the anterior wall looks okay, the AVL looks okay. Sinus rhythm, bradycardia, left axis deviation, non specific T wave changes, incomplete right bundle branch block, non specific T wave changes. All right, we got a incomplete right bundle, complete right bundle branch block here, uh, sinus rhythm, PACs, some T wave changes, non specific T wave changes, but other than that, there is nothing really significant. Sinus bradycardia, T waves in the inferior leads are okay, anteriorly, there is some increased voltage in the bottom, nothing really significant. This is a pacemaker rhythm, this ventricular pacing, atrial sensing and uh, that's about it for this patient okay that's all folks uh, what i would suggest is you go back and listen to each one of these and write down some of the new points that you discover with each electrocardiogram and when you compile all these new findings and what is it makes it looks like a different uh, electrocardiogram that's when you correct, connect the dots and you'll be able to read these electrocardiograms uh, just as i have done and uh, we will meet again thank you so much this is dr nick nickam bye